bear with us, we'll be about another five minutes. Danny, would you like to come up, please? Danny, thanks for joining us this evening. Now, Danny is a young man who is typical, really, of what we've been talking about all evening. Um, I'm not going to steal his thunder, but he's managed to turn his life around, hence he's here with us this evening. You just want to tell, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit about your life, Danny? Yeah. Please. Just a bottom a little bit nervous. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I'll just tell you a little about, about, about myself growing up. Um, I, grew up in a, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. Um, I grew up with an alcoholic father. Um, my mother tried her best. Uh, and I've seen a lot of stuff I childish on see and stuff like that. But I, I was always full of fear, riddled in fear as a kid. And I got bullied a lot at school. And my journey into crime really started when I was about 15. Um, I used to sleep at me. I used to sleep at my cousin's house a lot. And and the reason I slept there is because she'd let me drink alcohol, and she'd be sat there smoking dope. And all, all the lads would be on the state. Just come down. It was an old dog's house for everybody on the state. And but the thing is, ain't drinking that all that fear went. And these older lads they seemed to like me a lot. Uh, but the thing is, it paid a price. I went out to no good with them uh, and stuff like that. But the thing is, I just wanted to be part of something. I, I, at school, I was a loner. I felt alone at home. And for the first time in my life, I had, I had some friends, which I thought were friends. And that, that was my journey, really, um, in, 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 in the crime and stuff. And, but the thing is, it became, it, it, became a normal, it became a normal way of living as well. Um, I, I was shattered. When I, didn't have, I didn't have confidence. Um, I didn't know how to talk to people properly uh, and stuff like that. I was, I, was, I was broken. But the thing is, I was, I was also riddled in addiction. Um, I'm five years alcohol and drug free. Um, I ended up in a treatment centre. And this is how I got involved with Tempest Novo. Now, I, I met uh, a good friend of mine through recovery. And, and I just come out of prison. Um, the reason I was in prison that time was, um, this, this, is, this is how daft I was. I grew, I grew an house full of cannabis right outside the police station. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's how daft I was. But the thing is, like I say, it was a normal way of living for me. I didn't really seem all wrong with it. And, but the, but the police did, and probably the judge is here today who sentenced me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but yeah, a big sentence. <laughs> no, only a line of out here. <laughs> but, but yeah, um, but like I say, I, I got, I got, I got friends in with, with a, a pal of mine, and to tell you the truth, he's helped me. He helped me grow my confidence. Um, he mentored me in a lot of ways. Um, about a year ago. Um, this, this, is, this was my turning point. He, he helped me get confidence, learn to talk to people. Uh, my couldn't have done this in front of you people before, not a chance I'd have, I'd have crumbled. And, but like I say, uh, my turning point before was, well, you heard me on the video, I spoke about my daughter uh, coming in my life. I also had a, a younger daughter and I couldn't get a bond with her. And as much as I tried, I couldn't get this bond with her. And I, I, we had a good talk, uh, me and my friend, and. I took a DNA test on this little girl uh, and, I, and it came back and she wasn't mine. Now, I use prison a lot as a way to shut my head up sometimes, uh, just to get away from lifestyle, get off at a state, just to go for some peace and quiet, basically. And that day, if I wouldn't have had the support I had at the time, I would have gone back to jail on that, just to calm my head down, just to get, just to get away from it all. Uh, because I couldn't deal with my emotions, I couldn't use alcohol, I couldn't use drugs to numb myself. And, and we sat and we worked through it and, and stuff like that. And, and like I say, in my life today, it's, I, talk, I can talk to people properly. That's the main thing. I, I, I have a bit of respect about myself and people have respect to, to me. Um, I, I've, I've started, I've started my, own little, my own little gardening firm. I'm just, I'm just a one-man team. So if anyone's looking for a garden, I've got one else there. I've got some business cards. <laughs> can I ask you, Danny? I mean. In the past, the only time you would have come across a place like this, oh, I'd have been in probably searching it. early hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, think early hours of morning, wouldn't it? You know? <laughs> but yeah, but as regards 
Employment. Em employment's good. I, What's I, that? I, I, to tell you the truth, I feel I feel like a normal. That's what I feel like. Um, I used to laugh at people before um, getting up and going to work and stuff like that because I, I was a child in head. I didn't I didn't understand it all uh, and stuff like that. I passed my test um, at Christmas and, and now I'm driving. And, I, and just little simple things going to ASDA, getting me shopping, putting it in, putting it in motor, it's like fucking hell, man. It's not <laughs> to do. You're not meant to be a normal uh, and stuff. And I, I live at home by myself. I've got my, I've got a little dog, and, and and we both got to work together and, and stuff like that. It's, some customers won't like him soon because he started shitting in flower beds. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You know? But the thing, but the thing is, it's but what, what I'm going to say is, is Tempest Novo has not only brought the cycle with me. Um, it's also, I come from a family crippled in addiction, crime. Um, I've, got, I've got a cousin at the moment who is sat in Leeds Town Centre begging. Um, he's right bad on heroin uh, and stuff like that. But the thing is, this has brought the cycle with me. And I can show them a different way. By not pushing it on them, just showing them that there's a, there's a change. And this, and this is what this place is for. Don't mind. Can Helen come forward, please? Helen's our 100th ex offender into employment. Yes. Finally, Come on, trust me, this is finally. <laughs> you can breathe again in a few minutes. Carla, Carla could you come up and receive some flowers from us, please? you a little bit about Carla now, so you'll have to sweat for 30 seconds more. <laughs> Carla works with us two days a week doing our admin and she comes from a female prison, Ascombe Grange, which is part of her rehabilitation to help her to reintegrate back into society and she's absolutely key to Temper Snowball. So thank you from me for that. Thank you everybody for coming. Come uh, yeah. And next year there'll be probably be Leeds Arena with about five thousand. <laughs> 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 <laughs>